I think one thing you benefit from is um, you have pretty good genetics, especially having a small waist. So I think that allows you to have a nice long range to bulk. Um, I have the challenge that when I cut um, and I'm like around 11% on a DEXA scan, I'm 30 and a half inches on the waist, but within gaining 10 pounds of that or so, I go all the way up to 34 inches. How would you alter your cutting and bulking cycles if you were in my situation? Yeah, that's, that's a tricky one. Um, because for comparison, when I'm, when I'm about 11%, I would say my waist is pretty similar. And then I'm up like 30 pounds from that. And my waist is 33. So yeah, th there's definitely a, a juxtaposition there. Um, I do think that genetics is part of it. Um, and I have noticed, yeah, some people store fat around the waistline, just love handles, that kind of thing. And yeah, I, I would say that that is a tough one. It is tricky. And I would say it depends on probably on the rate that you gained that weight. Um, so how quickly was that 10 pounds or so? So the last time I did it, the 10 pounds I gained over five months. Um, the time before it was over like two and a half months. So I've been trying to, uh, be as moderate as possible on my bulks, knowing that I'm going to like, I don't want to be cutting all the time. Right. I'd like to be bulking more than cutting. So even if it's just a slight surplus, that seems to be more beneficial than having aggressive surplus in my situation. Sure. Yeah. And were the. Were the two to two and a half month bulk and the five month bulk, did you end up at roughly the same amount of waistline to muscle and performance gained? Did it seem like it was the same sort of ratio, but just slower? I would say that I had better progression in the gym and muscle gain during the five month bulk. Okay, yeah, that, that's what I would assume because typically... Typically, the more you overfeed, the worse the ratios that you see, you know. Um, the exception might be pure beginners who seem to be able to get away with quite large and quite aggressive surpluses. Um, actually, I, I had Eric Helms on the channel uh, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. I don't know. I saw that. And, yeah, yeah. And so he, he talked about a study where they took beginners and they just gave them weight gainers and they were in this huge surplus and they gained exclusively on average lean body mass which is i mean it's nice it would be it would be cool and because they gained on average exclusively lean body mass it means that some people actually gained muscle and lost fat despite being in a massive surplus which is like wild to think about that you start eating way more food, weight training, you gain only muscle and you actually lose fat. Like that's, 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 that's about dream. as good as it gets. Yeah. Like that's, that's, that's quite, that's chef's kiss right there. Um, I would probably ask you about sleep, stress levels, maybe protein intake. Um, but I don't think that's usually the limiting factor. It might be if it's like, I think all three of those are good. I'm never stressed as an individual. It's not my personality. I sleep eight hours and I probably get close to a gram of protein per per, per, per what I weigh. Yeah. All right. So those those are on point. Um, and then I would probably look at the training. Um, but I assume if you're following me, that's that's probably pretty good as well. Um, and it, it could be any number of things. Um, and then probably, probably going about as about the, probably the rate that you're going. I mean, ten pounds in five months. That's um that's a pretty reasonable rate. Um, and then maybe being a little bit more aggressive during the cuts. I mean, I think you can probably take off a pound to two pounds, probably two pounds a, a week um, for a short period of time. And so, you know, 10 pounds up, maybe eight or 10 pounds down and um, just sort of keep keep iterating that thing while driving up performance. 
and then maintaining performance when you're cutting. Um, and so, and then realizing, you know, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be a fairly slow process. You know? Yeah, that's fine. Again, I'm competing against myself. So I kind of know the, you know, the rules of the game. Um, so it's just, I have a smaller bulking window is what it appears. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like one argument could be like, oh no, you need to gain more weight to like solidify the gains or like to, to stabilize at a new body weight. Um, but I think for most people, um, that's not really the play unless, yeah, they're a beginner. I mean, I, I gained probably 30 pounds my first year. Um, and most of that was in my first six months. Um, I mean, in my first four months, I went from 68 kilos to 81, I think. Um, and so Is that gained, when you were squatting all the time? No, that was before that. That was my, that was like into my second year. That was small off. Um, that, that year I went from like, 80 not not that year in a couple months i went from 81 to 85 kilos and then i cut for the summer down to like 82 um and so but my first my first four months i probably went from 68 kilos like 150 pounds up to 81 kilos which is uh like 178 or so cool but yeah about 30 pounds in four months